this is geometry lesson 10.2 and we're going to talk about the measures of arcs. So first of all, let's let's look at this little diagram of Randolph and his dog Rudy. Randolph is standing at the center of a circle um, and on the outside of the circle is Rudy and Rudy's dog dish. Randolph is again standing at the center of the circle, glances at Rudy and when he glances at Rudy, he's looking at a radius of the circle. And then Randolph spins. He stays at the center of the circle and he spins around to look at the food dish, which is another radius of the circle because it's from where Randolph is all the way to the edge of the circle. And when Randolph spun from looking at Rudy and then looking at the food dish, he spun a certain number of degrees and we call that an angle and that is a central angle of the circle. Now, Rudy, of course, wants to get to the food dish. And if Rudy were to walk around the circle to the food dish, he'd walk a particular length. Today, we're not going to be talking about the length that Rudy will be walking. We're going to talk about what's called the measure of this arc from Rudy to the food dish, this arc here. We're going to talk about the measure of it, which is not the same thing as the length. Okay, so this measure... Now, we began looking at that picture saying we had Rudy Randolph standing at the center of the circle. So that's here at point C. And we had two endpoints on the circle. We had uh, Rudy and the food dish. Here we have got A and B as the endpoints um, of this angle that's created right here. And that is called the central angle. So it's an angle formed by two radii and has the center of the circle as its vertex. It's important to note that, again, we use the same notation for angle measures or angles as we always have. It's important to note that the central angle is less than 180 degrees. You could say, well, what if I, what if Randolph, when he was standing here, started by looking at the food dish, spun all the way around, and then looked at Rudy? Well, that's not a central angle. That is outside of the central angle. The central angle has to always be the angle measure of less than 180 degrees. That's what makes it a central angle. Okay. And what is associated with the central angle is what is known as the minor arc. And it's the arc between those two endpoints of the central angle. And again, since this central angle is less than 180 degrees, this minor arc has a measure, and we're talking about measures, which are going to be in degrees, it has a measure of less than 180 degrees. So how do we name it? How do we write it? We know how to write angles, we have the symbols we use. We use a little angle symbol, and then we have an endpoint, the vertex, and the other endpoint. Well, for the arc, we're going to use endpoints. We're going to use A and B, but instead of this symbol here for angle, we're going to use a symbol that represents arc, and it is an arc that actually is written over the endpoints. So we say endpoint A, endpoint B, with an arc over it. We just have two letters, and then this arc, and we say arc AB. And it means the minor arc, the minor arc that is associated to the central angle. So what about a major arc? What is this concept of this major arc? Well, just like we talked about how there was the central angle and then there's outside of the central angle, we have the minor arc, which is right here from A to B. And the major arc would be, again, from A to B, but it would be going all the way around more than 180 degrees in measure to get to B. So how do we, um, we, we talk about it that it's more than 180 degrees. Um, that's the, the main difference here, that a minor arc is always going to be less than 180 degrees and a major arc is always going to be more than 180 degrees. Well, we started at A and we ended at B. How do I know that this is a minor arc instead of the major arc? Well, we have to pick a location between the endpoints A and B that's on the circle. So we have one here, location D. And therefore, to talk about that, we're going to say endpoint A, endpoint B, but it goes through this point D. A major arc always, always, always has three points that describe it. 
the two endpoints and one other point that's on the major arc. Okay. Now, we said that the minor arc is less than 180 degrees and a major arc is more than 180 degrees. Well, what about when it's exactly 180 degrees? Well, that would be a semicircle. So a semicircle is an arc between endpoints that are endpoints of a diameter. So first of all, we have to look at our picture here. We don't have a diameter, so we're going to put a diameter, meaning we're going to put a cord that goes through the center of the circle. It has endpoints F and B, and we end up with two semicircles. I could either talk about the semicircle that goes from B through the point A all the way to F, or I could talk about the semicircle that starts at B and goes through the point D and then gets to F. They are two different semicircles, but both of them have the same measure. They both have the measure of 180 degrees. So let's talk about these measures. We've talked about the, the, um, what they are, what a major arc is, what a minor arc is, what a central angle is. But now we want to actually talk about um, how do we denote, how do we, how do we write measure of an arc and, and everything else. So first of all, the measures um, of an arc, and this is going to be a, a minor arc, okay? The m measure of a minor arc is the same as the measure of the central angle. Since the central angle is 50 degrees, then this minor arc, the mar arc AB, has a measure. And look up here where it's in the on your handout. It has an M in front of it. It says the measure of the arc AB equals 50 degrees. So we have that M, and so write that in your notes, M and then arc AB. That's when we say the measure of arc AB. Now, the measure of a major arc, this part here is 50. The other arc measure, well, there's 360 degrees when you go all the way around a circle. So we would take 360 degrees and we would subtract away the minor arc. Okay, so we take 360 and we subtract the measure of the related minor arc. So the major arc and the minor arc have the same two endpoints. One of them is less than 180 degrees. The other one is more than 180 degrees. The measure of a semicircle is always 180 degrees. There's no adding or subtracting or anything you need to do. If you've got a semicircle, then it's 180 degrees. So here we have a diagram. The first thing I always want you to do when you have a diagram is fill out what you can see. I can see that I have a diameter. So therefore, the measure of that straight angle is 180 degrees. So mark that in your diagram. Here, well, this is still a, di um, a diameter. So these two angles added together have to add up to 180 degrees. So we can figure out the measure of the missing angle right there is 135. So we have a central angle of 45 degrees. We have a central angle of 135 degrees. And then we have this diameter that has 180 degrees. Looking at each of these, we have to determine what they want. And it says find the measure of each arc. This doesn't say M. It just says find the measure of the arc BD. So I see that I have an endpoint B and an endpoint D. And do they mean this arc or do they mean th this other arc here? No, they, they mean the minor arc, BD, so that's 45. BAD, the second one here, this is the major arc. This one only had two letters. It said start at B, go to D directly. Don't stop with any other points in between it. This one says no, go B, then A, then D. So we're going to go the other way around. Well, what we could do here is we could add 180 plus 135 or simply take 360 and subtract away the 45 degrees and we get the measure of angle of the arc BAD is 315. Now let's look at this other one, BDA. It has um, the same letters but in different orders because this one is saying endpoint B, endpoint A. So endpoint B endpoint A, but goes to, oh, they want this, this one right here. And we look at that and say, oh, that happens to be a semicircle. So that, because ends points are on a diameter. And so that's 180 degrees. All right. 
bring up adjacent arcs. So let's look at this picture right here, and I'm gonna add a point to this picture. So first of all, it says adjacent arcs are when they intersect at exactly one point. This is important, one point, not two points, and, and or anything, they intersect at one point. So look at the, the add a point D here, and I'm gonna look at these two arcs. I wanna look at arc AB and the arc DC, and you'll notice these two arcs that I just put in this diagram. They don't share any points in common. They have no common points at all, okay? And to be adjacent arcs, they have to intersect to have one and only one common point, all right? So these ones don't have any common points, so they are non-adjacent. And we wanna talk and specifically talk about adjacent arcs in what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna erase that now, and we're gonna talk about what we have here. And it's going to be for the arc addition postulate, which says you can only add arcs together if they are adjacent. So now I'm looking at this arc AB and the arc BC, and these two arcs have one point and only one point in common. So therefore, I can add the measures of those two arcs to get the measure of one arc the arc A, B, C. And I would have to use three letters because this is an arc that has more than 180 degrees. All right, so do this problem here. We need to first figure out what's missing. We're missing this central angle right here, the measure of the angle WCX. And we know that these four angles are gonna add up to 360. So we take 360, subtract away at those angles, and we get 115 degrees, which we know that that's the missing central angle. And then they want us to find the, the measures of these different arcs. So the first one says X, Z. So I'm looking at from X to Z, and we want to know, do they want this from X to Z? And I'm looking at that and saying, ooh, that's going to be more than 180 degrees. This only has two letters. Ah, that means they want the minor arc from X to Z. So we have to pick the side from X to Z that is less than 180. And we could see the other side here was more. So we're just going to add 40 plus 135. And we get 175. So the measure of the arc XZ is 175. Please make sure you are using the correct notation. The measure of the arc XZ equals 175 degrees. For the next problem, we see we have three letters. Since we have three letters, we know that's a major arc. We know that we're going to have more than 180 degrees. And so we're going to pick the side. Um, we did not pick over here W to, to Y. We went from y, W to Y this side because, um, of course, it does go through the point Z because it tells us to do so. And we add those two angles together. And that will give us the measure of the arc, the ma the that major arc, 205 degrees. Wx, well, Wx is right here. It's a major, um, actually a minor arc. There's only two letters. So we're just going through those two. And we found that that one was 115 earlier. So we're using our central angles to find the measures of our arcs. Let's talk about congruency. In circles, well, for circles to be congruent, they have to be congruent if they have the same radius. And what that also means is if you were to draw two circles with the same radius, cut them out, you could lay one right on top of the other. So it says if and only if a rigid motion composition um, maps one right on top of the other. So you just pick one up and it's exactly the same thing. It, the other way is to say they have the same radius, okay? That's when circles are congruent. But what about arcs? Okay, what about congruent arcs? Well, congruent arcs are, are the, or arcs are congruent if and only if they have the exact same measure. So two arcs that have the measure of 115 degrees, we would say, are those congruent arcs? Well, it says if and only if they have the same measure, and then it says and, and that's important, and they are in the same circle. Or if not in the same circle, they must be in congruent circles, circles with the same radius. So it's not enough for them 
to just have a measure of 115 degrees, it's both. They have to come from circles that have the same radius, either the same circle, so two arcs of 150 degrees in the same circle, or two circles with the same radius that have arcs of 115 degrees. So here's the theorem. Congruent circles theorem says two circles are congruent if and only if they have the same radius. And con uh, congruent central angles theorem says, and remember, if we say central angles, we're also going to have um, congruent arcs. So it's congruent central angles, and this would also be congruent arcs. It's in the same circle or congruent circles. Two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their central angles are congruent. So let's look at um, some examples of this. Tell whether or not they're, they are indicated arcs are congruent and explain why or why not. So first of all, we're looking at the arc PQ, and it says right there that the arc PQ is 57 degrees. We know that the arc, the measure of the arc is 57 degrees because the central angle is 57 degrees. And the arc RS has a measure of 57 degrees because its central angle is also 57 degrees. Since these two angles are congruent, then the two arcs are also congruent. Okay. In this one here, we say, oh, look, both of these central angles are the same. This one's 60 degrees, and this one's 60 degrees. So their arc measures are both 60 degrees. Their central angles are congruent, so their arc measures are the same. But the circles are not congruent because they don't have the same radius. Since the the fact that the central angles are congruent is nullified, it's, it doesn't matter because if they're not the congruent circles or the same circle, then the arc measures cannot be the same. Oh, well, the arc measures are the same, but they're not congruent arcs is what it is. So similar circles. What, what does similar mean? Remember, similar means all you have to do is multiply by some scale factor, and you'll be able to either enlarge an object to make it um, look exactly the same, just a bigger size, or make it smaller, dilated, one way or the other. Well, all circles, when you make them larger or smaller, are still circles. They don't change their shape. They change their size, but not their shape. So therefore, all circles are similar. All circles are just multiples of other circles. But what about arcs? Are all arcs similar? Similar arcs are if and only if they have the same measure. So in that previous problem where both of our arc measures were 60 degrees, those would not congruent arcs, but they were similar arcs. Okay. Um, you have... Um, nine problems to do for classwork. I want you to work on those problems and um, I should be back in class to, to finish up this lesson. If not, I have posted the next lesson as well. So you can do these nine problems and then start on the next lesson because you do have two lessons today.